Welcome to DC Today this Tuesday, April the 2nd, in what ended up being a second down day to start off April in the second quarter. Um, yesterday, we, I, I thought maybe it was just April Fool's. It turns out it's going to have some follow through. No, but the, the market was off the lows for the day. We closed down 396 on the Dow. Um, uh, really, what drove this is, is rates are at the higher end of their range. The 10 year is trading at about 4, 436. It was up three basis points on the day, but that was after it ro rose 12 basis points yesterday. And so the market's just in risk assets are repricing some higher interest rates. But what's behind it isn't necessarily bad. It's yeah, some inflation numbers have, have remained in the you know high twos or low threes, but are definitely moving in the right direction. But it's positive economic growth and labor strength, and those things aren't aren't bad. If we end up with you know repricing because we're going to have a little higher interest rates through the remainder of the year, um, that doesn't frighten me too much uh, uh, per se. But um, we had uh, yesterday again positive manufacturing data that was good for for economic news. We had today. Um, some positive numbers out of uh, job openings. Um, they were the same. It was 8.8 .8 million this month, which which was really for February. And then we had uh, about the same exact number for the month before in January. So those are good numbers. Um, it's a healthy amount of job openings. That's a good sign for the employment market. Um, it's down from 12 million in 2022, which was the peak. So there's, it's come a long way to normalize at this point and, and now is sort of stabilized around these numbers. And I don't think that's, that's either a bad thing um, as well. So um, we had um, the uh, uh, section in there, David had a section in there ask, uh, about uh, the energy sector and, and some of the differences in different periods of time, um, alluding to, you know, the 15 and 16 period where energy was just sort of, you know, hated. And then even in the 20 period 2020 during covid you know oil futures were trading negative and just different different periods of time where, where energy was perceived one way or the other versus this sort of redemption period post covid where now you have you know energy doing well when stocks are doing well so if markets are up for example and you know 2023 you know energy was up as well um, but it was also up when stocks were down when the S&P was down in 2022 energy actually was a big outperformer so you just have positive fundamentals in that market. You know, the price of oil has stayed relatively stable in this sort of mid 80s level. And because of those previous years of over capital expenditure in 15 and 16, you just have a really much healthier um, energy sector as far as those companies go. And that, that's uh, those are all, all are good things. And, and obviously, we're believers of, of some of those businesses, particularly in the midstream pipeline space. Um, Factory orders for today were stronger than expected in um, some rebound from two months of negative. Um, we were up 1.4% for the month of March. Um, so good, good to see those things. That's positive for the economy um, and, uh, and, and so on. The uh, Ask Brian section was responding to an astute question, and I hope my response sounded um, respectful, I suppose. Um, I meant it to be of course. Um, but it was a, a, a reader that was commenting on something else he had read about this being the sort of definitive second top to the biggest bubble in U.S. financial history and kind of thought, wanted to ask me what I thought about that. Um, there's not a lot for me to really reconcile with those types of statements. Uh, you know, and it's not to say good or bad about the person who wrote it, I, I sense, but, you know, they're written that way because it grabs headlines, it grabs eyeballs, it grabs clicks, it grabs readers. It's it's more about that than it is about trying to offer you some sort of insight into how to help you design a portfolio or what you should you know what what you should do around those sorts of things. You really can't plan too well for the sky is falling type of thing. And of course, the future isn't predictable; it's unpredictable. And so we try to control uh, or, or focus and 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 spend our time at the Bonson Group focusing on things that we can control you know, analyzing companies from the bottom up, making sure client asset allocations are correct, things like this. Um, so I don't have any more comments about the sky is falling uh, other than that uh, to say, other than I don't think it is. So there you have it.
With that, tomorrow we've got some ADP private payroll data that comes out and some ISM services data that will come out. Uh, so there'll be lots more to kind of go through with you tomorrow. And I look forward to it. Reach out with your questions. Thanks so much. And actually, before I let you go, I wanted to give just a, a little mention that today, April 2nd, 2024, is the now ninth anniversary of the Bonson Group leaving Morgan Stanley, where we previously were, and moving out into our new fiduciary independent paradigm and building what is now the Bonson Group that you know of, of today. And um, it was, it, you know, it's, uh, I remember there was an hour or so of unemployment for David and I when we left Morgan Stanley, you know, before we started the new gig, but um, it's just been surreal, this amazing journey. And I'm just so thankful and grateful for the now 60 people. At the time we left, we had um, David and I plus six others. So there was eight people on the team and roughly 600 million or so in client assets. And now it's 60 people and you know 5.3 billion showing up on my screen every morning it's quite surreal but uh the, today's the ninth year anniversary i just wanted to say thank you to all on the team i'm so grateful and to every client that's listening and for all your support mm -hmm.